Hello, second graders. My name is Janice McPhillips. I'm here at Holly Hill Farm in Cohasset with Education Director John Belber. And we're here today to talk to you about seeds. Seeds are many places in nature. Um, you can find them out in the woods. You can even find them inside of a piece of fruit. You all know what this is. I know no one can answer me, <laughs> but let me all hear it. It's a, right, it's an apple. I'm gonna cut the apple in half part of my lunch today. <laughs> and lo and behold, what's inside? Ooh, seeds. More than just the few you see here. If I dug a little bit more, you could see. So nature created these fabulous things because you want the apple to keep going. So I'm gonna eat this apple and it will be gone. It will nourish me. But what's left behind? We have some seeds which I could plant and turn into an apple tree. So here's what I did. I took some of this beautiful glass gem corn that we grow in many school gardens. Isn't that beautiful? It looks like it could be jewelry. And I took some of the kernels off the, off the cob of corn. I hate to do that because it's so perfect, but here's one. And I put them inside of a wet towel. And they've been sitting here for a few days, some of them for longer than others. And look what has happened. How magical is this? These kernels of corn are intact, but these two here, look what's happening. I'm hoping you can see that. They're growing. This kernel of corn has um, made a root, which is going to go down into the soil, and a stem, which is going above the soil, looking for light. So what can I do with this? I can plant it in a little seed tray here. Now usually we plant seeds directly in the ground. We can't see what's going on under the ground, can we? We have joked for years about the fact that we'd like to invent an underground camera that would keep an eye on that. But when you plant a seed in the ground, you have no idea what's going on. But I found these awesome uh, models of what is in fact happening under the ground. And here's the first one. That's a little bean seed inside a little cube of soil. And as you can see, it's growing. I'm going to use this knife to point. It's growing a little tiny uh, root. That'll happen after a couple of days in some soil. The seed is starting to form a stem. The seed coat is about to fall off. That brown thing is the seed coat. And you can just see the beginning of the formation of the first set of leaves. We call these cotyledons. And then next, those are the cotyledons or seed leaves. Can you see that? And then out from the inside of the bean comes the first set of true leaves. And then after more time, maybe a week or so, maybe 10 days, two weeks, the plant starts making its own food by using the energy from the sun to nourish the plant. Okay, second graders. I'm John Belber. I know I've seen you at some of your schools. It's great to have you here to learn and continue learning about seeds. Janice talked about where they come from and how they can start to grow here are different examples of where you can find seeds. It's a great adventure to always figure out. Inside the apple, outside of the pine cone, inside the sunflower head. Today, with our three sisters planting, we're gonna focus on corn, beans, and squash. It takes back and dates back to a Native American planting, where Native Americans would plant these three companion plants together. They really work well when they grow together. They use very little space, and they support and help each other as they grow. If you can think back and imagine, and still today, Native Americans are planting this way, and we can plant this way too, of beans wrapping around the tall corn and the squash plants with their long vines spreading around. So let's get started. Janice talked about where to find seeds. Here's a nice example of some bean seeds. Some bean seeds have been saved on their vine. You can imagine the plant that was growing in the ground last fall and we came into some classrooms to talk about uh, these seeds and what do you think is inside this bean pod beans right instead of eating them last fall we saved them we saved the bean pods and inside we saved the beans one two three four five six seven if you guessed seven, you were right. So what can we do with them? We could soak them to see if they're gonna grow like Janice did in the towel on the plate there. Or we can get ready to put those right into the ground. I've got some beans here. 
I also, if I don't save bean pods, I've got some seeds that I can order from the store. Maybe you want to try this at home, second grade. Go to a seed company and order some good, healthy, ready to grow seeds. And once I have those seeds, and we're starting with beans, I just want to show you the Blue Lake pole beans. Also a white bean there. There's many different kinds of colors of beans. So once we have those seeds, where do they go? I'm gonna place them right into the soil. One, maybe I'll do two and three, just for good luck. Is every seed going to grow? I don't know, I can't guarantee that. We can't be sure. We hope they will grow. So in there, I will tuck in three bean seeds, make sure they're covered so they have a nice, happy, good, healthy chance to grow. And set that aside, I can put a tag in there to say beans, so I'll remember to myself, those are beans growing. Then when it comes to squash, there's different kinds of squash. I don't have a squash with me today, but I have some seed packets. So a good second grade reading there tells me these are Jack B. Little pumpkin seeds. There's a crown pumpkin, another kind of winter squash. There's delicata, another kind of winter squash. And an acorn squash, squash table king acorn squash. You can pick those squash plants, the pumpkins, the acorns, the delicatas, even spaghetti squash. You can pick those squashes in the fall and you can save them for some winter eating. You can imagine the Native Americans could do that too. They could grow and save their produce for those long winters when there was not necessarily a grocery store to go to. They needed to have that produce available that they had grown. All right, so what can I do with, um, we'll start with pumpkins. I could plant those pumpkins right into these pots. So beans are there. Here's my pot, the nice um, little cardboard pot that can go into the ground. You don't have to worry about putting plastic underground. And tell me if that looks familiar, boys and girls. Those are some nice pumpkin seeds. And again, I might try a lucky three just to see how well these are going to grow. So here are the three pumpkin seeds all set to grow. They too need to be tucked in so they can begin to germinate. That's a good fancy word for sprout. A good word for these seeds to develop their roots. Remember Janice showed you the teeny tiny corn seed that had a teeny tiny root and the beginning stem. So I would like these pumpkins to do the same thing. Cover over gently with some soil so they'll have a good chance to grow and I will label that pumpkin. And then, as mentioned in the beginning, the glass gem corn, I got a whole bunch of corn saved here. I could maybe try to pop it. This is a variety that is a popcorn. There's different kinds of corn, just like there are different kinds of beans, right? Different kinds of corn, a yellow corn, a sweet corn that you eat on a summer day. This is some great glass gem corn that Janice mentioned. She has a whole tray right there and since we have four schools we're planting for, I can start a whole nother tray right here with a corn seed in each little pot, each little cell. This is a one, two, three, four, five by 10. That's 50, some spring math, second grade. Corn seeds getting set to grow. We are going to make sure that Janice and I and all the farm teachers here at Holly Hill can start these three sister plantings, corn, bean, and squash. Put them here at Holly Hill Farm at our education garden. Janice is gonna show the education garden, which has lots of garden beds. Just like each school has a garden bed, we are gonna grow a three sisters garden here. We hope the corn will grow nice and tall. The beans will wrap around the corn like the corn is a tall pole and the squash whether it's delicata or pumpkin, will spread all around the ground and help protect against any weeds and provide some moisture so the corn can be happy, the beans will be thrilled, and the squash will do a nice job of protecting. And we'll have three plantings, boys and girls, as 
the Native Americans have done, the Wampanoag uh, will continue to do. And we hope that you have happy planting, you stay safe and healthy, and you can always talk to Holly Hill Farm if you have questions about this, but this is a nice chance to review seeds growing into plants. Thank you, second grade.